In Quick Tip 166, I showed you how to get started in taking a realistic image and abstracting it. Well, I got so many requests, we're going to take it to the next level. So one specific question I got that sort of summarizes what people were asking me to do said, um, how would you begin by adding some detail while keeping it abstract? So if you haven't watched Quick Tip 166, maybe you want to do that before you continue to watch this one. If you watched it, you remembered it hadn't been that long ago uh, since we published it. So this is not exactly the, the, the image I came up with for Quick Tip 166, but it's the same principle. The same image I used here. And you see what I've done here is I've just reduced this to five major shapes. And then I assigned those five major shapes to three value areas. So I have the darkest dark right here. That's where I took from this area right here. I have what you might call a middle value, which is still a shadow value, but it would, it, it, when we get into abstract, we're not doing light shadow anymore. We're just doing design principles. So we take a middle value that is from the sh sort of shallow shadow area I'm reading right here and right here, and then a light value area. So this is light shape. This is taking the light here, middle here, and dark there. So what would I do next? If I wanted to take this and continue that in order to create an abstract painting, what would I do next? Well, there are many ways we can go, but here's what, since we have it this far, since the abstraction is based upon the value and shape, and what, we would, what I would do next is, I, I see I'm keeping that angle, so I think I'd want to stick to keeping the whole thing sort of angular. What I would do next is I would go in, I would start with the dark shape and say, where do I see variations in value? So if I go into this, this area, which would be this area, where do I see value, variations in value? And not just variations in value, but variations in value that would enhance the abstract painting. So I see a few variations in value there. Now I have developed a value line on my palette and I'm sticking to one, uh, this is, you would call this monochromatic perhaps. I'm sticking to one color. This is pretty much one color, yellow green to kind of blue green, or it's in one hue, analogous colors, yellow green to blue green. Um, if you want to know how to do a value line, uh, then you can go over to Quick Tip 130 and I'll show you how to do a value line there. So I don't want to have to go in that there. But I've set up a value line here. Now what I can do, I see right here I'm seeing variations. And so what I would do now is just look in that dark area and look for value variations. So I would move into a value area. Since this is very dark, I would get a little bit lighter. And I see where I see opportunities for variation. I set variation here. Now, I want this value area not to be as dark as this. So I'll just blend it in and have it just a little bit, a little bit darker. And I will kind of, I'll kind of still read values that I'm seeing in that shape that is in this shadow area right here. So then I can just stroke the paint in and develop variations of dark that that give me a little bit more depth and I can continue that finding variations of dark in that negative shape in that one negative shape or, or what I consider to be that one negative shape now I could in there all right so where I might leave that about right there where oh, yes. I'm, I'm sort of just uh, randomly choosing the areas of dark here that I'm giving some variation. So I might move now to the middle value area and say, where do I see opportunities for value variation? Now, I could do color variation. I could do value variation. I could do color variation. I could do chroma variation. Uh, but I'm just want to keep this quick tip nice and, and, uh, and short so that you don't get all bogged down. So I want to keep it simple and stick with the, just the value variation. So if I move up the value scale, I get um, right in here. Where do I see value? Well, I see some value variation right here. So I'll just get the, maybe get that a little bit lighter. I could get a little lighter right here. I could get a little lighter right here. 
I could get a little lighter right here. Just give this just just vary the direction of my strokes. I could get it a little bit lighter right in here. Vary the direction of my strokes. So that's another variation I could be giving it. And I uh, see uh, I could make give it a little bit light uh, more light right in here. I might add a little bit of variation right in here. I might go a little darker. I might give it a little more darker variation right in here. So I might just move in that direction here. A little bit darker there perhaps and if what I'm doing is I'm looking at this image and I'm finding those those variations you don't have to do that but that's one way to do it there are no rules uh, for creating the abstract painting and there are no rules for creating uh, or even abstracting from an abstract image but what we're looking for is balance in design we're looking for uh, repetition and variation we're looking for ways to keep a composition nice and unified and balanced without haphazardly just throwing shapes uh, at the canvas. So this is what we'll be looking for. Now that might that might that might follow through if I come right over here and do a similar thing. So I've done these strokes here. I might repeat that here. That repetition of a of repeating a kind of stroke, repeating this kind of stroke that is Move, that's a little lighter and that's moving either horizontal or vertical or diagonally and let's see get a little bit more variation right there I might do that now that's not a rule that's just one way that I might do it I might step back and say well this could stand maybe to go in just a little bit more right here so I kind of change that shape a little bit all kinds of options I might say make it stand to go in a little bit more there I might I might come down I might say this could stand to be a little bit more interesting if I kind of change that shape and make it do that. You see, this shape seems to flow in value to this shape right in here. So I might continue that, or now uh, I might go into the lighter area and see now how can I find variations in the lighter area, what I might do there. So I might go and I might in that lighter area um, do the same principle where you see I'm repeating a pattern here. So I say, okay, where I might get that a little bit lighter using the same stroke patterns. So stroke patterns, uh, value variation. So I might give it a little lighter there. I might give it a little lighter here. I might create a little bit lighter here. I might do the same thing here. I might I might make that stroke of that, that shape a little more interesting, kind of protrude it out a little bit there. I might change the direction of the, of the shape a little bit like here. It's, these are options. They're, they're not rules. They're just options. There is no specific way I can tell you that you would continue abstracting or continue, uh, I think the, the, the um, response there said uh, adding more details. Well, that's what I'm doing now. This is in abstract painting. This would be called a detail, wouldn't it? Where you're adding variations. And let's see, this, we can get that even lighter. I can go in and pick up some more light. And um, I might add a little bit more light right here. Here. Now, I want to be careful that I, that I don't overdo that because I don't want to lose it. So I might even connect that light a little bit more right there. Let's see, now I like that idea of connecting light. Let's see, maybe I could do, add a little... I see a little light coming through here. I might add a little light right there. Oh, I see a little light coming through here. That gives me an idea that I might add a little light right here. I might add another little bit of light right here. Now I might go in the other direction now and, and add a little bit of dark into that light area. So I might add a little dark. I might come up here. I might add just a little bit darker shape right in here. I might uh, do that. Add a little bit darker shape right in there. I might add maybe here. I can get my clues from here or I can simply look at this and decide that that's what's needed to, to give it the variety and give it the interest that I feel the, the abstract painting needs. So then I might do this. And what I'm doing there is simply looking at those smaller value variations. I'm not looking at grape. I'm simply looking at those smaller value variations. So I might do that. Now done in this shape, I don't see that much, but in order to make the shape feel like it's more part of the whole process, I might push in just a little bit there for variation and do a little bit of that right there. 
It also helps to give a little bit more transition between this shape and that shape. Now, if I wanted to, at this point, I could decide, um, as I said, I wanted to keep this simple as far as color is concerned, but I might decide, well, now the, the negative shape seems a little bit blah. So maybe I want to give that negative shape a little bit more variations. You see the thinking process here? And so then I might move a value up, or let's see, there's a very light light popped out right there. What if we make, what if we create, what if we create a little bit of light over there, kind of open up that negative shape just a little bit, and not have it quite so contrasty as this is, but well, let's suppose we do something like that, and just sort of lighten up that area. And if I don't want that shape cutting off at the corner there, I just might take it all the way up like that. That sort of lightens up. Maybe that wasn't a good idea. If it's not, I would make it dark again. Um, all right. Let's see what else. Let's see. Perhaps I could take. Perhaps I could take some of this dark, and perhaps I could kind of carve some edges here. Perhaps I could do something like that, and kind of give a little bit more. Now, see, I created a new element there. I created kind of a line element. Do I want to continue that? Um, we might be able to just by pulling that line element this way. But when you introduce, any time you introduce a new element, you repeat it. You repeat it somewhere. It's kind of like quilting. Um, I've never quilted, but I understand from quilters that when you start, when you have one element, it needs to be repeated. So that's the way repetition and variation are the things that give, uh, give interest and uh, give more energy, more energy to to any any creative composition or any visual design. So you can see there, um, and at what point do you decide that you need to stop? Well, I need to stop pretty soon because we don't want this quick tip to be too long. But when you, when you feel that the, the whole thing has reached a balance, uh, has unity, has order, and which means it's not confusing in any place, not visually confused, now visually, when I say visual, remember that art or painting is a visual language. You don't have to have an image there to tell you what it is, but the colors speak. The colors speak. The values speak. The textures speak. The sizes speak. The directions speak. We give them an order and make them understandable by the way we organize them. The way we organize them so that they're not confusing and the way we organize them so that they feel balanced. And so I might say, well, that feels organized enough. One little thing seems to be kind of bothersome here. That means this, this seems to be a little bit too much like this. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna move in right in here and I'm going to make that a little bit more interesting and cut down on that brilliance because also remember that where the lightest lights and the darkest darks are are where the eyes are going to be attracted. And so I'm gonna pull that attraction away from that edge there and the, that means the amount of light and dark there will end up being about right here so the eye will flow through the composition. So I could continue and maybe stand back and look at it and give little, little uh, adjustments here or there but basically that's the kind of thinking, the thinking process that you can do in order to take a realistic image, abstract its major shapes, abstract it into maybe three major values. You could even abstract it into two major values. I wouldn't do any more than that at first. And then begin to look at how to find variations of values within those value areas. So if you, if you like this quick tip or if you want me to address something that you might have a question about, comment section right down there. Leave us a comment. Check out our full-length videos at dianemice.com. You might find something there that's interesting too. And there's your quick tip.